Hello. Cinema C. Cinema C, yes. Oh, you're right, yeah. Okay. Really quickly. And action. Let's do this, Ryan Rojas. Are you married to... Are there two Rojas? Right here. So are we. Yeah. This is my are brother. Rojas? That's awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> Guys, what's going on? I don't know. It's actually a cult. It is a cult. What? You guys are young people, so you don't know uh, that th as a person that was born in 1971, this guy had this huge influence on my life, and I didn't even know who he was. It was kind of like seeing Hamilton and going like, oh, that guy had a lot to do with the beginning of this country. Comedy is way different uh, today than it was in the past because it's always evolving and changing and people are adding things. But I think part of the point of our movie is that there's a history there and that a lot of the bedrock attitudes and comedic sensibility that we do have today was invented and shaped by Doug Kenny and the people around him. I was tight with all those guys. I, I was with them in New York. Yeah, I, I knew and, and still know the ones that are alive, uh, virtually everybody in the film. So it was really weird to see people playing people that I know were real and that lived and that's not him, but it is him and, and so forth. But uh, yeah, back in the 70s, I was in New York and uh, it was uh, it was the place to be. And I remember it as being something I wasn't supposed to read because it was dirty and then funny and um, I was in a theater geek, so that was not something I was supposed to read. The yearbook, which again, you're way too young to know it. It's a historical document to you, but it really changed. It was the first piece of satire that I was like, oh, this is, you can make fun of stuff like this. And, um, and I was, I don't know, 10? Uh, it was like the first VHS. Caddyshack, I think, was the first VHS that you could have in your home. So that was the first movie that I probably watched 50 times. And then Animal House 2. Joel McHale is always giving me a hard time. You know what? Screw you, Joel McHale. Screw you. I remember, I think, seeing National Lampoon magazines on my older sister's boyfriend's like dresser and thinking, wow, that's like graduate school. I was reading Mad Magazines at the time and scared to look at the Lampoon. And then I would peek in and be like, whoa. <laughs> Uh, I will say that uh, I definitely went into comedy because my dad told jokes all day long. Now, a lot of people who say the funniest people in their life are their family or trying to just make themselves look even better. Probably my mother, inadvertently. I think my mom. But uh, my dad's nickname for my brothers and I growing up was Jerk. And he'd be like, Jerk, let's go. And uh, love, it. It, was, it was very important for me to see somebody like my father making fun of things. And I went, oh, that's a thing you can do. Really good camera work, Ross. And uh, boy, just moving in and out. So very Quentin tarantino -esque. If I had to think of an answer who the funniest person I know is, it's this guy I went to high school with who became a, a money manager and lives in San Francisco. And he honestly still talk to him today. He makes me laugh and possibly harder than anybody else. I would buy a Groucho Marx a martini. It would be Gary Shandling, because I miss him so much. Um, Shirley Temple, and I would buy her a Shirley Temple. I love that. Well, congratulations. That was Thank great. Thank you. <laughs>